Good evening, everyone. Uh, let me uh, welcome you to the um, April 22nd meeting of the Bowen County Board of Education. We'll open this meeting, please, with uh, prayer. Miss Lindsay? Everyone, if you bow your heads. Dear Lord, thank you for this beautiful day, and thank you for our Baldwin County family. Please keep your eye and, and watch out for all of us as we go through the end of the year and be with our seniors to help them through graduation and on into a bright future. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible with liberty and justice for all. And, um, excuse me, let me get this back so if someone can hear me. Uh, would like to welcome one visitor for sure with us tonight, uh, Mr. Davis, Joe Davis from the County Commission. We appreciate you being with us tonight. Thank you. It's all about us working together, not just having been to one of your meetings in a while. and just wanted to sit in. Thank you so much. Well, good. We appreciate you being here. Thank you, No letters of commendation, I believe. Is that right? All right. And... So now we move to approval of minutes. We have two sets of minutes on the agenda uh, right now, Mar minutes for March 18th and minutes for March 23rd special meeting. I assume everyone has read over those and we'll take them or try to both at the same time. Motion to approve. Uh, motion, motion to approve. Uh, Ms. Colley second. Uh, Mr. Stewart. Any questions? Not. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? And the motion carries. Uh, we have no one signed up to speak this evening, so we'll move on, um, Mr. Tyler, to amendments to the agenda. Yes, ma'am. Amendments to the agenda. Amend number 10, leave of absence of personnel. Number 11, retirement and resignations of personnel. Number 16, employment of personnel. Number 17, extra work for extended periods. Add number 18, dissemination proposed board policy 6.1.7, tardies and early checkouts. Number 19, approval of letter of engagement, Stone Crosby PC. Number 20, approval of letter of engagement, Bishop Colvin Johnson and Kent LLC. Number 21, 2021-2022, Revised extra work wages amended. Number 22, administrative appointment. Do you've heard the amendments and the additions? Uh, do I have a motion? So moved. Motion for Mr. Stewart. Second from Ms. Lindsay. Any questions or discussion? If not, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Ms. Dawson Board, we have uh, Lee Lawson here with the uh, Baldwin County Economic Development Alliance. Uh, kind of wants to give y'all an update on where we are with our, uh, our career tech, possible career tech academy that we've been presenting to y'all. So Lee, if you would. Thank you, Superintendent Tyler. You wanna get me hooked up, huh? Thank you, I appreciate it. Uh, board members, glad to be with you this evening. Um, and appreciate the opportunity to give you an update on kind of where things stand and, and what um, our organization and some of our partners have been doing to work towards a successful um, development of a career tech high school. Again, you know, I, I stood in front of you um, uh, many times over the last year, but about a year ago here talking about the need for um, more advanced career tech education. And, and we've been having this discussion for, for multiple years and what it means for economic development and what it means for us as a community what it means for our region and i can tell you um with with our engagement with the leadership um, at the school system level um, we have made a ton of progress in this conversation um, and i think that our partners have seen that the business community has seen that 
and our governmental leaders have seen that. And, and so I want to give you just a quick overview and then answer any questions you may have uh, of me and, and then about what we've been doing, the conversation we've been having, and then what the path forward looks like. Um, we have had a lot of successful conversations with governmental partners, uh, both at a municipal level, at a county level. I see Commissioner Joe Davis is here in the room. Um, great conversations with the county commission about their support of this project. Uh, Joe Bonner, Governor Ivey's uh, chief of staff, uh, we've met several times in person to discuss this project with him and Nick Moore. Um, our, our legislative leadership, not only the Baldwin County delegation, but both Education Trust Fund budget chairman um, and leadership both in the House and the Senate. Um, and all of them have heralded this project as one that could be a, a regional model, uh, a model for the rest of the state. Um, and we have their support. Uh, not only do we have their support for the project, uh, we have support for their pro to support the project financially um, and, and with partnerships. Um, as far as business and industry engagement, um, and I know that um, a couple of the board members were privy to some meetings that happened towards the end of the year last year, but there have been even more conversations that have happened with private sector partners in all arenas, healthcare, aviation, maritime, um, IT, um, utilities, the home building sector, the Baldwin County Home Builders and the State Home Builders Association are at the table, um, all in support of this project um, and in support of career tech and, and, and the advancement of it, internships, plugging students into careers, um, into career pathways that lead to jobs and careers right out, of, right out of Baldwin County schools or after two year or four year education. This is not an and or. And I think that's been important that the business community has communicated that to us and leadership, not just, you know, not just middle management. This has been C-suite level leadership to say this is needed and this is wanted and our hand is up to partner with you. Um, and grants, grant funding identification is something that we've been hard at work at. Um, every single private sector bank and organization has a grant process to go through uh, that is eligible for funding. Uh, we've identified other foundational grants um, just you know within the last few months uh, Caterpillar uh, as a company and Thompson Tractor uh, company that's located in our community has pledged support not only corporately but also from the Thompson Family Foundation. So there are opportunities like that if this project were to move forward that there's going to be other opportunities to further conversations like that with granting organizations <coughs> and with grant opportunities. Um, and so with that enhancement and engagement not only on the public sector and our public sector partners like Commissioner Davis and the Baldwin County Commission, our state partners at a legislative level uh, at an executive level from Governor Ivey's office on down, uh, we have support. We have support for this project. We have buy-in for the project. And if it does move forward, I think we're going to be in a position to then further enhance these relationships where there is financial partnerships, there are partnerships to take these students, give us leadership not only in a in the curriculum setting, which we've had uh, to build the curriculum, to help equip the facility, um, which we've been having those conversations. Um, and truly, I mean, I've been having anecdotal conversations with people I do life with, uh, whether it's church, the ball fields, day in, day at work. And I can tell you every single one of them continue to ask, when is this going to be open? Because I want to have my kids an opportunity to participate in this because the landscape is changing. It's changing right in front of us. And I think we can all agree if you've, if you've tried to get a plumber to your house or you've tried to get uh, HVAC help um, to come um, service your house or your business in any part of this county, but especially um, in, in some of the areas where that need is even more dense, we're seeing it. There's a sign in every window um, right now hiring no matter the skill level, no matter the, the wage level. And, um, and this is a way that we fill the pipeline better than and more innovatively than anybody else in this state. And truly, this your team and I with them have been all over the country to look at examples, and I think better than anybody in the country. Um, and so I, I sit before you tonight to say our, our partnership with you is strong, um, but we need you. And we need your help and assistance from an economic development success standpoint. We have activity, we have suitors looking, um, you know, from anywhere from 50 new jobs to 5,000 new jobs. 
and and we can't service them without unique innovative opportunities like what your team has developed in this career tech high school um, and this is our answer to that workforce question um, and so i appreciate the opportunity to partner not only with uh, superintendent tyler your great team that you have i, I can't say that enough um, this this team and I, I haven't worked with a lot of school systems but i can tell you this team is is top notch and um, the questions that they asked uh, the vision that they kind of have when we walk into these other facilities and other parts of the country um, and just kind of the the lessons that we've been able to bat around the table about how to make this the best center it could be um, has truly been a phenomenal experience and we look forward to continuing it we need to honestly i think we have to um, so i appreciate the time um, i don't want to take much more of that but i do appreciate the relationship we have and i think we've made a ton of progress in the last 12 months and really the stage is set for us to really have some success here moving forward with this project be glad to answer any questions you have for me thank you i would i would really hope the board would please uh ask lee i mean anything i mean that's who's money uh well the county commission um has pledged a financial support um our legislative delegation has pledged financial support whether it be this year in this year's budget of course we were late to that conversation this year um but we have commitments to further that conversation at a state level um, into the next budget year uh, we have the governor's office looking uh, on our behalf commitment from joe to to look and to help us um, we have commitments from private industry to support us but we haven't spelled that out yet uh, we have a we have a round budget number on equipment and that's really what we're discussing with them right now is the equipping of the facility because we believe that's where the gap will be um, you know we and we have commitments there but we need to spell that out and um, i don't have a spreadsheet with numbers attached to commitments but i have partners and i know joe will tell you and give you a thumbs up and tell you they're in um, we're currently identifying monies and going to continue to identify monies to fill in that gap um, but we do have commitments the only thing i mean i'm all for career tech don't get me wrong yes, sir the problem i have is the price tag on the school Huntsville, they built, they built some kind of tech school up there. I don't remember what it was. The cyber high school. Yeah, yes, sir. And the state threw in several million dollars to help them out. Well, I, I hadn't heard of our office. You know, they talk about giving us a We're going to do a $50 million loan for 20 years. So I, this is my seventh year on the board, and we it pay as you go. And I take pride in that absolutely as you, you know, should i mean i yes, know sir. the growth is just off the chart mm -hmm. but you know i just i just hate to borrow money i understand even though it's yeah. low you know interest but still M mr mark i understand completely where you are and and what i can tell you is i think we have set the stage to really capitalize on some state dollars in, in next year's budget cycle um where we are from a financial perspective on partners helping us is we believe that we can fill in that gap financially and and part of part of why the cyber high school and some of these other specialty projects have been funded um, at such a level of state dollars is they've they've been legislatively created i mean the cyber high school is a legislatively created high school you you in, in this project you want to own it and control it and i think that's the best approach but unfortunately that's um that's not unique of that's not enough of a unicorn to be able to line item money um to it in the budget and with our conversations with leadership i i met with the etf chairman bill pool last week <coughs> as a matter of fact in montgomery to discuss that very matter um, we have commitments from coastal alabama community college to partner with us and we think that there is definitely a financial commitment there um, so we know that they're there the next step for us is really locking those down and i think once we are able to cement that hey we're moving forward you are carrying a lot of the water on the construction that then will help those con those conversations that aren't concrete yet turn into concrete what go ahead sorry no, no go ahead. what what kind of talk about lockdown um what kind of agreements in terms uh from the industry have you gotten 
in regards to equipment. I mean, building the building and putting in personnel and putting in equipment is like buying a car. Now you've just gotten started because every so often you're going to need tires and you're going to fill that thing up with gas every time you turn around. So, the, you know, the expense is going to, going to come not after we build it, you know, just stop. It's going to continue. It's a recurring kind of thing, and especially in the world of technology. Every time you turn around, the equipment's going to be outdated. My concern, and what I hope you're able to get, because I think the Career Tech High School is a perfect idea, and I want to see it happen, but I want to see the kind of commitment from industry that says, I'm here the day you start it, and I'm here 10 years from now when I know the equipment has to be changed out because what is there is obsolete for what I'm, tr I'm training for. And, um, you know, I want in the conversation, I, what I'm really asking you is, are we, are you at least communicating to industry that the Board of Education doesn't expect them to find a time when, well, I, you know, this isn't working, I'm going to throw up my hands and walk away from the table. Because if they're not committed and they don't have total buy-in, it's really easy to get up and walk away from the table. And then here we sit. So I want to make sure that they understand that they're in, an equi they're in a, a commitment, not just day one, but five years from now or 10 years from now when the equipment needs to be changed out. So are those conversations being had with industry? Do they understand we're talking about a long-term partnership? Yes, ma'am, Ms. Dawson. And I, I think my answer is twofold to that. It's yes, that those conversations are happening. And yes, our team has talked about the refresh. You know, the equipment refresh is, is a big, has been a big part of our discussions because we know like you said, you're just getting started when you build it and first equip it. And we, we just visited within the, within the last few months two, two brand new Career Tech High Schools that have just been equipped to see how they equipped it, to see how they have segmented it, to see how they've done their supplies and how they've also projected for the refresh and how they purchased certain equipment that has more of a shelf life or has more um, adaptability to technology upgrades and enhancements and so we've, we've been able to experience that and we think we have a good plan for the first equipment being one that carries us through some longevity but I can tell you this part of that answer about industry business and industry's commitment long term to this will be the success of the school and, and we firmly believe in what we've talked about as a team and, and, and with Superintendent Tyler and his leadership is the success of the product that we put out of that school will further the business and industry engagement. We have an overwhelming amount of business, business and industry engagement commitments now, but we will further those commitments and, and further them out into that 10-year refresh window by the success of the students and the success that they're going to, and the, the benefit they're going to reap from the school in the human resource. And, and that's kind of my answer to that is it's yes we have that commitment but B it's going to be on us to kind of help cement that 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 commitment yeah. but no, nobody puts it in writing though. and we will get it in writing so what we've done what we've done is we've roughed out a capital campaign that then is a business and industry commitment and it's a it's a multi-year commitment you can't lock anybody into 10 years I've, I've been in the private sector and been asked for money before you can't lock him out of 10 years, but what we've looked at is a five-year pledge window um, in, in two tranches. And we've estimated a budget around that, and we've already kind of put a, almost like a United Way thermometer on the wall to say, you know, here are our targets, and here's what we think we might can achieve with some of our private sector partners. And, and where we are is we're kind of on the edge of, of you saying, all right, go for us locking those commitments in. And once you say go and, and that dirt starts moving, that's, that's when we're going to go to work and locking those in and we're going to start, we're going to start bubbling in that thermometer. One thing we've done too, Mr. Dawson, we have a consultant to work with the architects strictly on equipment. And we, we know we'll be into this, this project for two years. So we, we, we want the, the equipment's going to be ready for two years. The main thing that we've all discussed is the infrastructure. If, 
that's our issue with existing bills. If we have the infrastructure, even when it comes to the health science, a lot of it was just software updates. When it comes to cyber, it would be that. As far as the hands-on stuff, welding is a welding machine. You, there are some advances in certain technology, but a lot of that will just be can be piecemeal. It won't be all at one time. So, the trades, the hands-on, I see that gradually changing. But a lot of you're still going to be the fundamentals. HVAC is HVAC. Plumbing is going to be plumbing. But we we did reach out that with that consultant. That's one of the things we discussed. We want the 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 latest and the greatest, but we want to make sure we have the infrastructure for that. The infrastructure, I mean the electrical, everything that we need there, so when we do decide to advance and move forward with technology, all that's already in place, it's more or less a plug and play instead of having to redesign or go back and say, hey, we can't do this because our building's outdated. So that's, we have that consultant, we have been talking, and that's what when we visit the schools, we've asked them what changes they've made. A lot of them only been in operation for like two or three years. So we've asked them how they adapt to that. So that has been a, a conversation everywhere we visit. In most every school that we visited, save for maybe one that was really brand new and their first year was a COVID year. I mean, they had boards like this when you walked in their lobby and they had, you know, every corporate partner in the community and they had tiered levels of giving. They had certain rooms and certain industry areas sponsored by, you know, ABC industry and you had you know, equipment, you know, certain HVAC equipment in there, which we already have a commitment from an HVAC su uh, supplier to supply that equipment. They're doing it at a school in Georgia. They have a, a, a location in our community and their CEO has already signed off on it. So, I mean, we have these commitments lined up and honestly, we need to start turning dirt and, and start pushing towards a, a real concrete way of going vertical before we can really lock those commitments in. But we have them and that's what we've been doing for the last year. That's what I've been doing is going around meeting with these industry and, and business representatives and these governmental representatives say this is needed. And it's not, it, it, it is needed because of the, your school population and the amount of students that you're contributing straight to the workforce, but it's needed because of our existing business and industry needs. And what Joe and I talk about all the time is it's needed for these commitment, these opportunities that Joe and I and the commission are working on and other leaders are working on that, that you're not even aware of right now. Because when, we, when we're able to at least put a little bit of that, we, when we can put that architectural rendering in our proposals, mm -hmm. I promise you, out of most of the things we put in our proposal, that's the one that gets the most questions back of what is this and, and what's the timeline for it. We have no career tech in Alabama. Not a standalone career tech high school. The way that, the, the way that this one's been drawn up, it'll be a first of its kind. I know you went to other states and looked at it. Their funding is different. Well, yeah, I mean, every, yeah, every, every, every you know, state's they, different. They kind of support it more. We, yeah. we talk about supporting it. I'm talking about us. I'm talking about the state. state. And I know Coastal, talking with them, you know, they're, they're ready to dole out some serious books that they can certain amount, you know, sure. because they have limitations to do. But, you know, when we started out talking about this, it was 20 million. Then it went to 30, then it went to 40 and 50. The other night, John Gray said 70, like fell out of the chair. I mean, what is the number? And and that, and that I mean and that, and that truly is that truly is the world we're living in right now. I mean, we we are with with, with both the, some of the bigger projects that we've just announced in the last you know six months with with Aldi and, and now Imperial Day that we just announced this week. You know, a lot of those are going out to construction and they've got suppliers telling I mean, Imperial Day. They, their rebar supplier uh, and bar joist told them uh, we can maybe get you bar joist in November, but you got to tell us in two days. If not, it's going to be after January. So it's not a it's not a function of what it costs. It's a function of if you can get it right now in a lot of arenas. And, and personal too, uh, you know, you're trying to hire somebody to fix your fence after Sally, and you know, it's not it's it's every field. Lee, I just wanted to point out, uh, Joe has stood up. If yeah. he let me share with you my conversations with people like Austell and Airbus. And by the way, 54% of the people that work there live in Baldwin County, mm. and most of them's children go to school in public schools. One of the things that they told us from the get-go is, Joe, we'll be interested in getting the end result, and we'll invest the equipment because we need them to learn what we need them to know. Mm -hmm. But right. one thing we will not be able to sell to our board and our stockholders is owning a building. So that's where y'all having the building 
worst absolute scenario is you'll have a building. Whereas these businesses need a place that they can come in, they get bought by other companies as well, and their leadership changes and their focuses change. But what we'll have is a building, a way that we will be able to, my objective, because I see the glass half full always, but my objective is to be able to come in and help pay off that debt early because it's going to be such a success mm -hmm. and because it's going to be the model that everybody in the state needs to deal with. Plus, we're dealing with FEMA, we're dealing with ALDOT, and we need to deal with Montgomery from the top down. Everything that goes on in Baldwin County benefits everybody in this state. And this is a great investment in this community. And FEMA, for example, we floated $82 million of debris removal expense, and we've gotten that much back. Now, we're not going to play good guy anymore. If the little bald-headed guy that gets all red in the face needs to say some things, I'm going to say them because they're the truth. But here's the positive thing that this is going to do. This is showing that even with the adversity and trying to sell north of Birmingham about how we are, that we're going to have local support for a building that's going to provide the future. And there will be kids coming from all over this state, I'm convinced, because this is a great place to live, it's a great place to get educated, and it's a great place to work. My experience dealing with five paper mills up in the Thomasville area. You've got to stay on top of technology, but we don't need to figure out what we need to teach them. We need them to tell us what our kids need to know. And the sooner they can know it, the sooner uh, they can get out there and make the good buck. So I encourage, I understand, Tony, I understand the questions because I have them myself. But I know that the details and the conversations are such that once we get break ground on this once we have the kind of conversations with the governor and and her staff and we're going to have that on, on FEMA this next week uh, those are the kinds of things that we've got to ask for because our legislative group can deal but there are 67 counties and unless we get TVA money that I don't know about <laughs> I don't think North of Birmingham needs to get any go Mason money that's just my thing <laughs> but <laughs> Oh yeah, but we haven't gotten any TVA money. And my point is, let's invest, let's invest in the fourth largest county in the state of Alabama. And the census does not take into account tourists and snowbirds. How much money do we spend and send to Montgomery? All we want to be is a little appreciated. And this is a great investment, and we're showing that we're going to be doing it locally because we're going to put the building up that will be state-of-the-art and the Businesses and industries are going to put the equipment in there that our young people need. But um, Lee and I didn't plan this. Uh, he and I talk uh, <laughs> talk a lot. He winds me up sometimes, and he wants to build a lot better. Than <laughs> <laughs> but uh, but the point is, we're all in this together, mm -hmm. and we've got a great a great story to tell. And uh, I'm not going to apologize to anybody about Baldwin County, in Montgomery, in Washington, in Atlanta, or anywhere else because we're a great place for the state and the citizens to invest in. You all know that. And what you all do with our young people. Mm. Yeah, good luck. Right now. That's exactly right. I just right. got data where uh, housing sales in March in Baldwin County were 647 more than the sales in uh, Mobile. It is crazy. I've never seen anything like it. Yeah. Well, and, part of, and part of what we talk about sales. As so we I'll get, bridge, as we get, <laughs> I, I, I know it, but it, what will scare you is what they'll offer you for years. I mean, okay, I'm just saying, <laughs> but hey, remember, our approach is this, from the county and the staff, and you all have great staff, and we're blessed with great staff. Mm -hmm. In fact, I was sharing uh, with John about the, uh, the walking track uh, at the uh, Daphne East Elementary School, being able to work together to make these things happen. So let's work together on this. I understand your concerns. I have them myself. I'm all for it. Oh, I know you are. I know you are. But it looks like we're y'all are having to foot all the bill. We're going to be able to get the state to participate more. I'm convinced of that. But thank you. Sorry well, I jumped and, in. And I wanted, to, I wanted to weigh in a little bit, too. You know, sure. I think 
I think the one thing we have to remember as the school system is high schools like the cyber technology, Alabama School of Math and Science, the Fine Arts High School, you know, those are all high schools that service the entire state. Kids from across the state can go there. And so they do get a line item. They do get money from the state. This isn't going we to don't. be that right. way. You know, you're still going to have to be a Baldwin County student or have some other special permission, you, you know, to, to be County, able you can come from Mobile County to, to right. attend this to, to be able to attend. And so it's not going to be a state high school like the others. And so what I really appreciate is the work from Lee and the county and, and everybody who is going to Montgomery and, and putting the pressure. I know that um, just very recently there was a system who got some workforce development money from the gov from the governor's budget and for a career tech high school. And so I know it can happen. It's timing, it's, yes, yes. Well, it's timing, it's, it's, pressure, it's pressure. I know that there are conversations with AIDT to equip the high school. And so it can happen. It's just, it's timing. And, and you know, I think until we're to the point where we're ready to start turning dirt you know these are all just conversations and we've got to get to the point where we're ready to start turning dirt on it i think we have to be careful asking for too much state or federal money because it comes with that all the we'd rather run this thing like we know how to run a school and i know generally there's an excitement on this board about this but it, we're charged with the fiduciary responsibility of asking those questions i love it i love it when we have these discussions but i think everybody in this room we're ready for this thing to blow and go because sometimes you have to step out in faith. And I think that's kind of what we're doing, but I feel this is a safe bet it because it's just bet. getting started. That's right. And that's, and that's, and that's what we've Thank you. That's what we've sold. Thank you, Joe. Thank, thank you. All, all, thank you, Joe. I really appreciate it. If y'all if y'all got a question about the county's commitment, that, that should be answered by now. Um, thank you, Joe, again. But we, the conversation we've been having is this is not an expense. It's not an expense. It's an investment. Uh, you know, so I've told Bill Poole, so I've told Joe Bonner, so I've told all these these conversations have been out. So we told business and industry, this is an investment, and we need you to co-invest with us. It's not an expense. Let's not look at it like that. It's not a line item expense. This is an investment. It's an investment in the fastest growing area of the state, in a net contributor county that's going to keep growing and keep keep contributing to the state's economy. And I think too, and I appreciate the support from the county level. I come from uh, a little town, Orange Beach, and I know nobody up here would say it, but I've heard before, if Orange Beach wanted, it, they can pay for it, they got all the money. Well, it can be the same thing said about Baldwin County. And so, um, I mean, again, I would never allow someone to argue that point with me because I don't want any more than I deserve. I just want what I'm supposed to get. Yeah. yeah, and so, and if you if you don't fight, you're not going to get it because mm -hmm. it's real easy just to kick the can down the road. So, you know, I've had reservations, you know, but this good cop, bad cop thing I just saw, you know, I'm, <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm entitled to, uh, which, I feel Everybody a lot. Everybody Everybody <laughs> well, you had me at the short ball guy. Ball so, hit his <laughs> red face. Yeah. Me and Cecil. So, uh, Pawn shot trying. But, but I, pre I appreciate you fighting for us. Yeah, uh, absolutely. And, uh, but yeah, I, I think it is needed. It is something that uh, will put us on the forefront. It's essential to our current success, and it's, it's essential to our future success. It really is, and I, I firmly believe that. And well, you, and if I, I could, with, with, with what leads, somebody who was going to I, Andy, I was going to say one thing. But, go ahead. Okay. Yeah. The only other thing I wanted to say was I, I really think that the reputation of Bowen County School System should uh, should go a long way in getting that support at the state level um, we we put our this team and this superintendent and certainly over the last you know six years every time they put their mind together to accomplish a particular thing it is obvious the success that we've been having and with the dedication that this team is putting together and the support from this board for this particular high school, then it would be equally, I think, successful. 
um, my questions about making sure that industry is, is truly committed does not have anything to do with my reservations about not wanting the school. It's just that we're, it, it's a big expense. We're really stepping out there. And when we do it, we're going to do it right. And just be sure you're with us, you know. 100%. So, uh, 100%. but I, I, I think the reputation of Baldwin County School System and its leadership will go a long way, I hope, in helping that. Well, and, and I know the industry will benefit, but I always go back to the students, and they are so going to benefit. And not being out of the classroom that long ago, it, so many kids need this. They need this. They don't need college. They need industry. And they're going to walk out of this career in tech college making a whole lot more than any of us are making probably at this point in our lives. So I, I just, I go back to the students. They, they honestly need this. And I, I'm so for this just, just because of the kids too. Uh, Renee's not here. She had a family situation tonight. Uh, what kind of enrollment? I know y'all visited these institutions and, and they had they had angst about the numbers. I think Mr. Meyer could first. I, I think I think you know, ideally we'd love to have 800 kids in this, in this school. Now again, I think there's going to be a building process in order and, and, a, and a PR campaign that we're yeah. really going to have to, to accomplish to get there, and a lot of changing the perception of uh, of the career tech program in Barnes County. But I think that would be a great goal to have. Well, what are our two? I, I, I can't remember what are our two career tech uh, have right now. Don't they have at least? Four to five hundred right now, both career tech centers, four hundred students. Uh, no, I think that's combined. Yeah, uh, combined. combined. That's nine through twelve, isn't it? Uh, but, that's an no, but, but that's an engagement too. I mean that's an engagement of coming to the career tech center and taking some some, some credits, you know, taking some some hours. It, it's not a it, it's not the same engagement level measurement. And, and what we what we've said as a team and what we've developed is kind of this three year window of the first three years of existence of the school. After that three year window, then the success stories of the the graduating students will then help us tear up to that eight hundred level and build that. And the success of our business and industry partnerships, and then the success of the students, like you said, Miss Lindsay, will then turn around and cultivate more uh, promotion in there we, we really do think it's yep. it's, it's going to be a success so mr mowdy is watching the, yeah. the the live stream in, in texas we have about 450 kids in our north and south career um center right now so i mean realistically building this state-of-the-art building and with the pr campaign i think having 600 to 800 is i mean i, I that's going to be a doable um goal that i, I fully yeah uh, our, our capacity. I mean, yeah, I think. Yeah, what would the capacity be? We I mean, well, we're, we're, we're hoping to get an 800, but I think we didn't mention 1,000. Yeah. Time. With with plans and options to expand, <coughs> with, yeah. you know, if if needed. And the concept, I just, I just, I just hope it'll be a building, you know, because we told these kids 50 years, you're not going to announce anything, you don't go to college. And now we're telling them, you need to, you know, to get to college, you Facts are facts. Man, just facts are facts. That's right. That's what it ought to do. But I mean, you got to get them out of that mindset. They're, you, they're hired. Actually, I heard with the front desk and give them a new car. <laughs> <laughs> they are. They are. I saw that. But I mean, it's everywhere you go. It's not. That new car. Not wow. They're putting you into a drawing. They won't work. Well, I think, and I think the historical <laughs> perception has been with Career Tech that it's a, it's an, it's an and or. Right. Um, and, yeah. and and I think that this is going to be this is not going to be that this this is going to be all options are on your table. You're, these kids are going to graduate college and career ready, mm -hmm. and they're going to have options. And I think that's that's the beautiful. When you part have partners this. like USA Health and Infirmary Health with the biomedical, you might have a student that's a sophomore who thinks about being uh, either an engineer or a doctor, and they go to this tech school because that's where they are and they get into the biomedical and then from there they go into a college and, and start in the chemistry to get their uh, pre-med I mean that so it's it's not just I want to come out and go right to work in an industry this is going to be where students can advance their career options before they hit college whether it's uh, going into engineering uh, and things of this nature so 
Um, John, did you have something? Yeah, and I just wanted to say, too, you know, um, our partnership with the Economic Development Alliance and having Lee at the table, I mean, I think that's tremendous. I mean, the asset that he brings, the ability to bring industry partners to the table, to, the ability to have one-on-one -on -one meetings with, with some of the big players in the state. I mean, these are a lot of things that we, we just – don't have the capacity to do on our own. Oh, right. And right. so as you know, I've, I've been there at the table uh, with Lee in these conversations and having him as a, as a partner in this endeavor, I think has gained a tremendous amount of momentum and it is going to pay off dividends in this investment in, in Baltimore County for the future. So I truly believe that. No, no, they're, no, they're, sir. they're building in Baltimore yeah, County. No, sir. Let me let me leave you Owen with the, let me leave you with this one last this one last story. So so back in December, we, we put about 15 different business executives in front of uh, the leadership team to come in and and really cement that industry partner engagement. And Daryl Taylor, who runs Airbus, was was one of those individuals and came over with their team. And what what Daryl said at the very end of our meeting said, my my son graduated high school last year. And he's currently um, he's currently working for a land a landscape crew, and, and maybe with hopes of having his own landscape business. But I so wish this would have existed for him. This this would have been where he would have gone. This would have been what he would have done, and mm -hmm. and he would have been benefited from this tremendously. So yes, it would have benefited me and my son personally had it been on the table. And he said, I can't imagine how many more. It will benefit. So yes, we're in. So I'll leave you with that, um, and I, I, I really do look forward to continuing our partnership and moving this project forward. Um, like I said, I think it is definitely necessary, um, and it is something that will be successful and help us contribute to our future economic development success. Well, and I know just real quick, board, and we'll move on. But I remember one of our meetings. I, I believe was there, and, I, and John, all of us were there. And I just stopped. I just, I was frustrated. I was saying, you know, it's time to stop talking and it's time to start doing. Because at that time, we'd been talking over two years. And I looked at Lee and I said, listen, I said, everybody says, yeah, this is a great idea. Yeah, we, we like it, whether it's the county commission or Montgomery or whoever. And they've been saying that for years, whether I was in this position or not. I said, but we're so tired of talking about this now. We need people at the table. And I asked Lee, well, I, I guess I... Totally. What's so much of a question? Yeah. <laughs> I said, we need these industry folks in front of us. I said, I, I need to look them in the eye, like Daryl from Airbus, like Austell, you know, like uh, Infirmary Health, like the. I need them to hear what we're doing and forget to get something from them of encouragement. And Lee did that. And to it, and then Joe says, all these folks that work in all these industries that live in Baldwin County. Mm -hmm. I mean. There's no secret why. I mean, they live over here because it's a great place to live and their kids are getting a great education. I mean, that's not a secret anymore. You know, when I, when I move around and I think about this thing, where else, when you move around Baldwin County, when you travel to Montgomery, when you travel wherever you go, what do you see? You don't see anything like we're going to put on 59. You don't, I don't hear superintendents in D1 talking about it. You know, I don't hear any of them talking about this. You know, this this right here is, and when when Joe said we own it, the, you know, and then when Lee said that's legislative acts that create those schools that get those dollars. Well, to be honest with you, I don't want Montgomery and the legislature coming in here and building anything for me that they control. They control enough of us as it is. But uh, I think we've sent a message loud and clear that we stand on our own. Look at what John showed you on the construction the other night. I mean, I, I, this is surreal to me still, that we're doing what we're doing. We've got a, a, almost a handle on some land for Silver Hill again. I was on a conversation today to build an elementary school. Uh, I mean, y'all just approved the Spanish Fort, which, you know, it, it's on and on and on. You know, these, these, these uh, cities are talking about the three mil. I mean, I, I mean, folks, I mean, uh, Tony's been, and Tony's, I, I agree with Mr. Meyer. When I got here and we started building and I've talked to John, and John's not, John, John don't want to tax folks. He doesn't want to tax anybody. And we, we have stood firm on, we don't want to bond. But you know something? As you grow 
and people see the value of coming here to try to keep up, sometimes you have to take educated risk. You know, and I see this as an educated risk. You know, that sometimes in leadership positions that you're in and I'm in, we just have to step outside the comfort zone sometimes and trust our judgment, trust our gut, trust what we know, and move forward. I mean, I'm excited, but I've told you before, my feelings aren't going to be hurt if all of a sudden this thing goes into a ditch and you don't ever want to get it out. I hope it's full of things But, uh, <laughs> but, uh, but you know, the other night when John put that up on the board there with what we had done and how much money we spent, that has never happened had it not been for the county commission. That's right. That's right. That's right. We can talk about how smart we are and how we are. It had never happened without that penny. I'm just telling you because they were the only ones that would help us. Only one. We're all in this together. I know you wasn't on there. Yeah. No, you can't. You just stay sitting there. <laughs> 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 yeah, but I have to hit the call. I, 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 I know. I'm just kidding. Hey, is there an age limit for students at this place? I mean, right. I was wondering the same thing. No, uh, coastal. Actually, through our partnership with Coastal Alabama Community College, there will be there will be community some community college will be a part some, of some it. adult education. Back. Absolutely, this building will be running day and night. Well, that's a whole other story. That's there. right. But but I I, I understand yeah. the anxieties. I really do. And uh, but you know something. You put me in a position for a reason, and sometimes that reason is to take risk. You know, uh, we've got a pretty good track record so far. Uh, I, I just appreciate y'all's willingness to listen. I know nothing is final until you say yes, but we cannot just run in place. Let's hurry up and say yes. Just Maybe like we're moving, this, yeah. Frank, we're, Frank we're, moving, we're moving stumps and stuff now, aren't we? Waiting, waiting for the contractor to start moving stuff out there on the, on the land. I'd like to have a wreck coming down looking for it. I still can't find exactly where it but is. But it would have beautiful 70 acres or something. Well, we need a tour. <laughs> <laughs> Thank but you, I, Lee. I Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. There's a house there. Huh? Thank you, Joe. Yeah, uh, Thank you, Thank you. All right. Um, action items. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma uh, agenda item one. Bid proposals. Uh, let's see. Yeah. Okay. Y'all mm -hmm. have y'all approved the uh, amendments to the agenda? We did. Okay. Uh, agenda item one: bid proposals. The superintendent recommends adoption of a motion to approve the low bidders meeting specifications for bids and bid extensions for goods and services for the system, as stipulated in the agenda exhibit. So move. Motion, Mr. Christenberry. Second. Second, Mr. Myrick. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? And motion carries. Sorry, I didn't ask for discussion. I guess I was ready to move on. Anybody want to? No, we're moving on. I'm sorry. All right. Uh, agenda item two, public works. Superintendent recommends adoption of a motion to approve the low bidders meeting specifications for public works projects as stipulated in the agenda exhibit. So moved. Motion, Ms. Colley. Second, Mr. Johnson. Any questions or discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Any opposed? The motion carries. Agenda item three, owner architect and owner engineer proposals. Superintendent recommends adoption of a motion to approve the OA and OE proposals for various projects as stipulated in the agenda exhibit. Motion, Mr. Myrick. Second. Second, Mr. Stewart. Any questions or discussion? If not, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Agenda item four, Baldwin County Economic Development Alliance Economic and Workforce Development Strategic Program Agreement Extension. Superintendent recommends adoption of a motion to authorize the superintendent to negotiate and enter into an extension of the agreement in form as approved by the superintendent with the Baldwin County Economic Development Alliance for the Economic and Workforce Development Strategic Proposal as stipulated in the agenda exhibit. And don't ask me to repeat that. <laughs> so Second. Motion, Ms. Colley. Second. Second, Mr. Christenberry. Any questions or discussion? <laughs> if not, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? And the motion carries. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Y'all can meet after the meeting. <laughs> Agenda item five, 
Membership Renewal, Alabama Council of School Board Attorneys 2021-2022. The superintendent recommends adoption of a motion to approve to pay the cost of membership in the Alabama Council of School Board Attorneys for the 2021-2022 fiscal year as stipulated in the agenda exhibit. Motion, Ms. Lindsay. Second. Second, Mr. Johnson. Any questions or discussion? If not, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? And motion carries. Agenda item six, elementary math textbook committee recommendation. The superintendent recommends adoption of a motion to approve the adoption of Envision Math, the selected elementary math curriculum, based on the recommendation of the local textbook adoption committee as stipulated in the agenda exhibit. So moved. Motion, Mr. Christenberry. Second, Ms. Lindsay. Any questions or discussion? If not, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? And the motion carries. Agenda item seven, secondary math textbook co committee recommendation. The superintendent recommends adoption of a motion to approve the secondary math textbooks based on the recommendation of the local textbook adoption committee as stipulated in the agenda exhibit. Motion, Ms. Lindsay. Second. Second, Mr. Christenberry. Any questions or discussion? If not, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? The motion carries. Agenda item eight, memorandum of understanding between Baldwin County Public Schools and Troy University. The superintendent recommends adoption of a motion to approve the memorandum of understanding as stipulated in the agenda exhibit. So motion, Mr. Myrick. Second. Second, Mr. Stewart. Any questions or discussion? Of us online now, I think, because oh, they do it. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> That's a good thing. Oh, yeah. Any other questions? If not, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Agenda item nine dissemination of parent and student handbook, student code of conduct 2021 2022. Superintendent recommends adoption of a motion to approve the dissemination of the 2021-2022 Parent and Student Handbook Student Code of Conduct to local schools and organizations for input as stipulated in the agenda exhibit. So moved. Motion by Ms. Colley, second by Ms. Lindsay. Any questions or discussion? If not, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Agenda item 10, leave of absence of personnel. Superintendent recommends adoption of a motion to approve the leave of absence of personnel as amended and provided to board members under separate cover. So move. Motion, Mr. Christenberry. Second, Mr. Johnson. Any questions or discussion? If not, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? No. Motion carries. Agenda item 11, retirement and resignation of personnel. Superintendent recommends adoption of a motion to approve the retirement and resignation of personnel as amended and provided to board members under separate cover. Motion, Ms. Lindsay. Second. Second, Ms. Colley. Any questions or discussion? If not, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? And the motion carries. Agenda item 12, termination of temporary and or non-tenured certificated personnel. The superintendent recommends adoption of a motion to approve the termination of the contracts of temporary and or non-tenured certificated personnel as provided to board members under separate cover. So moved. Motion by Ms. Colley. Second by Mr. Johnson. Any questions or discussion? If not, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? 
Motion carries. Agenda item 13, termination of temporary and or probationary classified personnel. The superintendent recommends adoption of a motion to approve the termination of classified personnel in accordance with Act Number 2011-270. Students First Act is provided to board members under separate cover. So moved. Motion by Ms. Colley. Second. Second by Mr. Crisenberry. Any questions or discussion? If not, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Agenda item 14, suspension of personnel unpaid. The superintendent recommends adoption of a motion to approve the unpaid suspension of personnel as provided to board members under separate cover. So moved. Second. Mo motion, Ms. Colley. Second, Mr. Crisenberry. Any questions or discussion? If not, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? The motion carries. Agenda item 15, transfer intent to transfer personnel. Superintendent recommends adoption of a motion to approve the transfer intent to transfer personnel as provided to board members under separate cover. Motion, motion by Ms. Lindsay, second by Mr. Stewart. Any questions or discussion? If not, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? And the motion carries. Agenda item 16, employment of personnel. The superintendent recommends adoption of a motion to approve the employment of personnel as amended and provided to board members under separate cover. So moved. Motion by Ms. Colley. Second. Second by Mr. Crisenberry. Any questions or discussion? If not, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Agenda item 17, extra work for extended periods. The superintendent recommends adoption of a motion to approve the extra work of personnel as amended and provided to board members under separate cover. So moved. Motion by Mr. Stewart. The second by Mr. Johnson. Any questions or discussion? If not, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? And the motion carries. Agenda item 18, dissemination proposed board policy 6.1.7, tardies and early checkouts. The superintendent recommends adoption of a motion to approve the dissemination of the proposed board policy to local schools and organizations for input as stipulated in the agenda exhibit. So moved. Motion by Ms. Colley. Second. A second by Mr. Christenberry. Any questions or discussion? If not, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? And the motion carries. Agenda item 19, approval of letter of engagement, Stone Crosby, PC. The superintendent recommends adoption of a motion to authorize the superintendent to execute the letter of engagement with Stone Crosby PC as stipulated in the agenda exhibit. Motion by Ms. Lindsay. Second. Second by Ms. Colley. Any questions or discussion? If not, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? And motion carries. Agenda item 20, approval of letter of engagement, Bishop Colvin Johnson and Kent LLC. Superintendent recommends adoption of a motion to authorize the superintendent to execute the letter of engagement with Bishop Colvin Johnson and Kent LLC as stipulated in the agenda exhibit. So moved. Motion by Ms. Colley. Second by Ms. Lindsay. Any questions or discussion? If not, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Agenda item 21, 2021-2022 revised extra work wages. Superintendent recommends adoption of a motion to approve the revised 2021-2022 extra work wages as amended and stipulated in the agenda exhibit. So moved. Motion by Mr. Stewart. Second by Mr. Myrick. Any questions or discussion? If not, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 All, any opposed? Motion carries. Agenda item 22, administrative appointment. Superintendent recommends adoption of a motion to approve the administrative appointment as provided to board members under separate cover. So moved. Motion by Ms. Colley. <clears throat> Second by Mr. Myrick. Any questions or discussion? If not, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? And the motion carries. I want to congratulate our new special education yeah. coordinator, Dawn Fournette. Uh, Dawn has been in this system for, I believe, 25 years uh, and 
impressive interview and she's earned her, earned her opportunity. So we're excited about that, about uh, uh, what's coming for our special needs. So uh, thank you, board. Appreciate it. That's a, that's a huge job right there. Yeah. Very huge she job. Very well, even though we turning, she's, <laughs> Don, <laughs> Don is we got very Scotty on She is very now. sharp. Scotty She's on very sharp. Dallas, said along with <laughs> Sarah. Yeah. Uh, very sharp, and she, uh, we were very impressed. Uh, lengthy day, lengthy interview, follow-up interview, and uh, answered all of our concerns. So we're excited about that. So that's all I have, Ms. Dawson. All right. Uh, and just before we leave, we will tell Scotty to be sure and uh, congratulate um, Mrs. Lewis, who is retiring. So uh, way too young. <laughs> She earned it. She earned it. Yeah. She had 25 years. To the minute. To the day. Well, I do know, uh, I, I, guys, I guess uh, media's not here. I don't know. No, media's not here. I looked for uh, Jesse and Nicole. Guys. Good to see them. Becky, we have. Thank you for coming. And Scotty? Canaan? Scotty. <laughs> Scotty. Well, Scotty, that's uh, that's a Cecil Christenberry answering that question. <laughs> <laughs> Wait a minute, I get in trouble on my oh, own. Oh, <laughs> we probably we probably better yeah. get. <laughs> Have game. <laughs> yeah, have game. We um, we we might better adjourn this meeting before we all get in trouble. So, uh, do I hear a motion to adjourn? So move. Second. Motion and second to adjourn. All in favor, say aye. 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 No. The meeting is adjourned, Mr. Chris and Barry. Olympics again tomorrow morning. <laughs> <laughs>